Well, there are a few realities when it comes to Canada. Firstly, commodities remain a key driver for some of our provincial outputs. In other provinces, housing has become an economic driver, and the new interest rate environment is weakening the picture in parts of Canada. Meanwhile, for our nation overall, our population is at a record level, and while that plays a role in our growth, it also complicates the growth story. Desjardins just published a report connecting all of these dots. Mark Des Moreau is an economist with Desjardins, and he joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Great to be here. So we talk about this stuff every day, all these different economic inputs, and depending on where you are in the country can impact provincial output as well. Absolutely. I would highlight three main themes from our most recent report. The first is that Ontario's economy is outperforming the national average with significant help from population growth, as you mentioned, as well as a recovery in automobile production. Second thing that I'll highlight is commodity production. The commodity producing provinces we think will fare the best when the economy slows over the course of the next year with support from those key outputs as well as relatively little exposure to housing. And then the third thing I would just highlight population growth. That's helped stimulate economic activity, but GDP per capita has actually been falling across the country for the last several quarters, which suggests more weakness than the headline. Explain that dynamic. What is it about population growth that further complicates the growth story, even if the numbers are trending higher? When you have the kind of population growth that we've been seeing, that adds a lot of support for consumer spending, for household demand, for all these key portions of any economy. But what we are seeing across the country is that the growth we're getting, while it has maintained been positive for the most part, it hasn't kept up with population growth. We look at the last year, for instance, population growth was about 3% in Canada. Overall economic growth was uh, less than 1.5%. So we want growth, and this is part of that story, but also this issue of productivity has been a big one for Canada for decades now. Productivity has been an issue for Canada. There's been a lack of business investment across the country when we look at, at the country in aggregate. That's part of the story here. But it's also about the fact that we're just having very strong population growth, which is needed over the long run at a time when consumers are increasingly feeling the pinch. So even though there is this very strong population growth, it's not necessarily translating into GDP per capita. And at a time when we're talking about a greener future and a lot of electric vehicles, your point about our commodity producing provinces is a reminder of one of the growth engines, at least in the short term in this country. Certainly we expect that Alberta, Saskatchewan, Newfoundland and Labrador will fare better than most other jurisdictions within Canada over the next year. There's support from rising commodity production still pretty good prices. Oil's been rallying strongly in the last few weeks. And then also there's relatively little exposure to housing and to housing related sectors like construction and financial services. So they are less exposed in this environment we're increasingly expecting where the cumulative effects of interest rates increasingly weigh down the Canadian economy. Has a portion of the economy become too reliant on housing? I mean, when prices were generally moving up, but interest rates were a lot lower and people were feeling a little less stress about this affordability issue. We kind of joke about becoming a housing nation, but now that we're staring at a possible cool down for the economy, do we have too much exposure to that one area? Certainly housing has contributed to the expansion significantly over the last few years. Going forward, we expect it to play a smaller role because primarily of those interest rate impacts weighing it down increasingly. But it's a different story in different parts of the country as well. If we look at, for instance, where housing sales have gone just since the Bank of Canada resumed raising interest rates, Toronto home sales have gone down by more than 20%. In Calgary, they're actually up more than 11% since the bank started raising rates again. So it speaks to the divergences here. Alberta and other parts of the country that are less reliant on housing, less uh, impacted by severely stretched affordability, their housing markets are still chugging along, in large part because they're getting such strong population growth. So we are uh, getting ready for another interest rate decision by the Bank of Canada. When you're trying to project where provincial output is going, uh, are you assuming that we're in this so-called higher for longer interest rate environment for Canada? We think that the Bank of Canada will remain on pause tomorrow. Uh, the cumulative effects of rising interest rates have not yet been felt by the overall Canadian economy. And so that is uh, something that we think will happen tomorrow. Going forward, we do think that there will be a reduction in interest rates as we get into early 2024. 
it will become clear at that point to the Bank of Canada that the economy is slowing and that a less restrictive policy rate is necessary.